In the practice of printmaking and painting, Ophelia Gelbeson Teki has achieved prominence given her exemplary works that meld fine arts, literature, history, and culture. This could probably be attributed partly to her formal education. She undertook special studies in graphic arts at Institute New York City in 1968. She obtained a diploma in painting from Accademia di Bell Arti di Roma, Italy, in 1967, a Bachelor of Arts in English in 1966, and in 1964, a Bachelor of Fine Arts, both from the University of the Philippines. In this podcast, I would like to focus on her Annaline painting on silk, which appeared untitled in 1982. The painting invites us to experience a meaningful image called hunting and thing in the context of Philippine history and culture. We see here a variant of hunting and thing in the form of a handkerchief embodying Christian religious images along with esoteric inscriptions that supposedly endows the material with potent spiritual power. Such spiritual power is said to be realized when the bearer surmounts certain challenges and difficulties, such as serious illness, economic difficulties, and social relational conflict. For further elaboration, you may refer to the essay of Filipino cultural anthropologist Prospero Kovar, titled Potentia, Visa, at Anting Anting. Three themes frame this podcast. The making of a painting, the artist's relationship with the audience, and visualizing social meaning. At the outset, I would hazard to say that Galveston Techie must have undertaken serious research that informed her conceptualization and visualization of the elements of the painting. I imagine that, like an ethnographer, she must have plowed through images that typically appear in all sorts of anting and king. Look at these two images and compare them with Bible Sun Teki's painting. It is pretty obvious that Teki appropriated these folk images and rendered them in a new form. She deployed a technique that may have been derived from the tradition of batik making in Asia. However, the more important point to make here, following Tim Ingold, is that the tendency to privilege form impoverishes our understanding of the mutual engagement between the artist and the raw material, making the relationship between the maker and the raw material a dynamic one. In short, as Teki disciplines the material towards her desired form, in turn, she is disciplined by the agency of the material. That is to say, her dexterity has to contend with the aniline dye applied on delicate silk cloth under certain environmental conditions such as lighting and temperature. To be sure, Galveston Teki has this to say with regard to her experience in printmaking, which I think also holds true with her practice of painting on cloth. Sometimes there are surprises which you can work with. Yung una mong direksyon, because there are surprises, it swerves a bit, and then you go in that other direction. You have to be humble and accept that you cannot control everything. Sometimes it turns out better than what you have planned before. With this painting of the Anting Anting elevated into what may be referred to as contemporary art, Gelveson Teki must have seen the value of folk images as materials for conversations in fine arts. She invites the audience to locate art at the intersection of ethnography as art and art as ethnography. This simply means that both art and ethnography involve the practice of cultural representation. But I should say that Gelveson Teki wittingly or unwittingly has limited her audience to those who are able to gain access to museums and galleries. 
What happens now to the folk being the source of cultural knowledge to begin with? One thought-provoking scenario would be to exhibit this painting in the heart of Kiapo, the seat of Anting Anting sellers. It would be of interest to know how sellers would receive the painting. Would they notice the resemblances between the painting and the images they typically associate with Anting Anting? Or would they raise the issue of fidelity to the typical forms? Finally, it is important to underscore that Galveston Techie has successfully embarked on the practice of materializing social meanings, particularly in the Anting Anting, as a dominant symbol in folk spirituality and power. Through this painting, one may realize that visualization amounts to materialization, freeing folk spirituality from the strictly ideational. This means that the painting makes ideas tangible in such a way that it engages the viewer's senses and meaning-making practice. A curious viewer will discover from historical records that many Filipino revolutionaries, including Emilio Aguinaldo, Andres Bonifacio, Antonio Luna, and Macario Sakai, wore anting anting, believing that it would ward off the bullets of colonizers. In his essay titled Toward the History from Below, Filipino historian Reynaldo Ileto made reference to a religio-political society, La Pia Malaya or the Freedom Party, who staged an uprising against the Marcos regime in May 1967 along a section of Taft Avenue. Armed only with sacred bullets, hunting and king or amulets and bullet-defying uniforms. In that social upheaval, it was said that the Kapati enthusiastically met the challenge of automatic weapons fired from government troopers, yielding only when scores of their comrades lay dead on the street. And here's another interesting historical fact. Jose Rizal and Ferdinand Marcos had anting and king at their disposal just like film characters Nardin Kuti and Darna. As a final note, having tackled the three themes, I can say that Gelveson Teki's art practice contributes to the mounting discourses on visualizing materiality, particularly those grounded in the realm of spirituality and power. And in this era of valorization of Philippine cultural heritage, her practice has brought to bear the ubiquity of Anting Anting as an active mediator between the living and the spirit world. Thus, Galveston Techie's genuine commitment and participation in the promotion of intangible cultural heritage deserves wider public recognition.